Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic Jewels. So for today's episode we're going to be starting the Shadows over Innistrad campaign missions. So uh, following on from both of the Gatewatch, uh, we've got the blurb here, so Shadows over Innistrad. The battle for Zendikar is over, and the Aldrazi Titans, Ulamog and Kozak lie vanquished, but even in victory, Jace Bellerin's thoughts are troubled. It was fellow planeswalker Sorin Markov who once helped contain the Eldrazi. Was he not here to fight was he not there to fight them this time? The search for answers begins on Sorin's home plane of Innistrad. Okay, so no flavour text here to start off with, so we're just going to start up. Looks like we've got maybe werewolves to start off with. So among Innistrad's dark mountains, Jace Bellerin begins his search in the one place on the plane he knows, the home of his ally Liliana Vess. But his path is fraught with danger, and Jace soon finds a cold welcome at the hands of a pack of werewolves. Okay, so uh, we've got some werewolves to take on for the uh, first mission of Shadows of Renistrad. Now here this campaign is actually far more boring than the previous one and I don't think we've really, I haven't really played with like Jace's kind of deck since um, the Origins campaign but I think I'm going to keep this hand. I mean we've got the Phantasmal Bear, we've got a Fog Bank, an Illusionary Servant, yeah it's not a bad opening hand. I mean we've got the one drop, the two drop, the three drop and then we potentially got a four drop if we find a mana when it enters the battlefield investigate so I don't know if we're going to be able to use the clue tokens at all mostly because you know the whole priority is uh, the whole priority with the game is like completely balked at the moment so we'll see how that goes at least we've got ourselves a nice 2-2 two, two, to start off the battlefield 2-2-2-2-2 two, 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 as uh, as they say okay so the AI has played double root bound crag so we're going to be able to get into um, get in for two damage this turn and uh, actually reading fog bank it's quite a nice defender so it's a zero two with flying and he can actually prevent all damage dealt to fog bank which is really cool so it's like the perfect defender so uh, it's only combat damage so it can be removed with like burn spells like fiery impulse twin bolt stuff like that but uh, as it is any combat damage um, is prevented to fog bank which is quite nice so so has my opponent got anything to play? Yes he does, he's got a Vigil, Vigil Ironsmith. So we'll, we'll read that in a second once it's uh, played out fully. So this isn't in the set, it would be if we had the full uh, lot of cards unlocked, but we don't because it's uh, Magic Jewel. So it's a Human Werewolf with First Strike at the beginning of each upkeep. Yep, so it's a 1-1 which transforms into a 3-1 with First Strike. Quite a nice card, clearly didn't make the grade in terms of... Uh, what's what I'm looking for? Um, spells uh or didn't make the great in terms of cards making it into the final uh release for magic jewels anyway i'm fairly sure this would be in the full release of shadows of Strad for paper magic but uh not for um digital magic so I'm looking for, apart from magic online of course which i point blank refuse to play as it sounds incredibly expensive Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Vigil Ironsmith may transform this turn if he doesn't play anything. Nope, he's going to play out a Tormented Parish. Pariah, sorry, not Parish. At the beginning of each upkip, okay, so it's just a 3-2 Werewolf that comes in for 4 mana, and then it becomes a 6-4 when it transforms. Okay, so yeah, we want to basically prevent any of these like large Werewolves transforming if we can. So we'll just keep playing out spells. So we'll probably play out a Drownwood Explorer this turn just so again it's just basically preventing um any uh any werewolves transforming is the main thing so we just go push through three damage with our uh illusionary servant we'll play out a drownwood ex uh, drown yard explorer sorry that's what we're looking for so that's going to get us a clue token not actually use a clue token yet so uh so basically we pay two mana sacrifice the artifact and draw a card so it's quite nice so we've potentially got some card draw next turn all we don't want to do is play a mana because it will just skip over the ability to play the clues. So I've heard you don't want to play out the mana. Okay, so he's played out on Ulrich's Kindred. So at the moment he's preventing himself from, uh, from transforming, which is kind of silly. But uh, So we're going to do this first so it doesn't automatically skip over. So we'll grab our clue. What we're going to get, we are going to get an Aberrant Researcher. So we can't actually play that out this turn, which is kind of annoying. Which basically means that these werewolves are now going to transform. But we should be okay. Yeah, unfortunately, this is just like one mana too many. So the two werewolves are now going to transform. We do have the uh, fog bank to uh, to block the bigger one, and we can also block the three one with our two four. So that's not too bad. So he's not going to swing, which is quite nice. So we've still got flyers on the board. 
and we've got a convicted killer come down and this is in the set so yeah it's just a a, a reasonable sized werewolf creature but nothing too interesting so it's just a 2-2 which transforms into a 4-4 no special abilities which is why it has not made it into my werewolf deck okay that's interesting so we have an aberrant research and a telling time this turn so we can actually play out both of these and transform his werewolves back so that's quite nice so i might do telling time first just in case we find something more interesting the aberrant researcher so um what does that transform into? It goes from a 3-2 into a 5-4, so that's actually pretty cool. So let's play Telling Time first, just in case we find something better than that, although that's a pretty good card. So, um, yeah, we'll take a Claustrophobia, and then we'll also get the Gone Missing, put it on top of our library. Uh, so we don't really need Claustrophobia right now, so we'll just play out the Aberrant Researcher, which has got a 6 damage in the air next turn, which is, you know, pretty sweet. So these, these two are going to transform back now into their uh, much much less much more docile werewolf uh, human form sorry so he's played nothing so they will transform again okay so that's three werewolves that are transforming this turn so far the AI has not really done a whole hell of a lot so this is going to trigger so oh yeah it did just flip so at the beginning of your upkeep put the top card of your library into your graveyard if it's an instance or sorcery card transfer aberrant researcher excellent so uh tap target creature it doesn't untap so what can we do here can we potentially push through lethal i don't think we can so we just swing with oh no we've actually got lethal on the board because i forgot that our aberrant researcher actually flipped into uh its uh perfected form so that's you know lethal against the werewolves no, 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 no retaliation. It was just a nice, uh, simple, simple win, really, there with Jace. Nets us 10 gold. There we go. We've also got some uh, token, um, token to work, working towards our, what's the one I'm looking for? Daily quest there, putting a token on the battlefield. What token did we put on the battlefield? I don't know. But Jace implores Liliana to help him unravel the mystery. She rebuffs him, far more concerned with her own pursuits of the demons that she still holds hell power over her and the chain veil. She points in Soren's home at Markov Manor, but she offers no other aid. Thanks for your help there, Liliana. God. Okay, so it looks like we've got vampires. So we've got what looks like werewolves, vampires, zombies, humans, and then Avacyn is looking like the uh, kind of the way we're, we're going through this. So as she reaches Markov Manor in search of Sorin, Jace comes across a bizarre sight. The manor has been twisted into a gravity-defined pattern of floating stonework. Towers, halls, and buttresses hang in impossible angles around the sundered core of the building. Okay, so what's happened to uh, Sorin's home? So look, yeah, we are taking on vampires this particular uh, match. So it looks like we've got a slightly bigger deck. Um... This is not a bad hand. Um, it could be better. I'm going to keep it mostly because we've got the Phantasmal Bear and the Jace's Scrutiny to bounce back. Um, oh no, it's just to give a creature minus four zero until end of turn. So, oh, very nice. We've got the Telling Time, which is pretty sweet. Very nice spell. So, pour over the pages is um, draw three cards and untap up to two lands and discard a card. Very nice. So, uh... So this is actually related to this story quest, so I'm certain that the fate of Markov Manor is connected to these cryptoliths. This Tamayo was onto something. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we've got red, black at the moment, vampires. So, we've got nothing that we need to battle, we need nothing we need to use Jace's scrutiny on, so we're just going to swing with the Phantasmal Bear, then use Telling Time on his, uh, on, on, not on his necessarily, but on the AI's, uh, off step. End step. I keep calling it off step for some reason, it's the end step. Okay, may as well use it now as he's played out a sanguin Sanguinary Mage, so it's a Prowess 1-3. So we'll play out the Telling Time first, which will grab a... Yeah, I think we'll grab an Island, and we'll also grab a Pour Over Pages, just because I feel as though they're slightly more useful. Okay, so... What can we do this turn? We've only got Jace's Scrutiny, so I don't think we can swing here. So we're just going to skip attack. So yeah, it's got prowess. So it'll go plus one, plus one every time an instant or sorcery or not. Is it non-creature? So in Storm, Kirk meant to enter battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on another target vampire you control. Now that is a very nice card, and I'm looking forward to using that in a vampire deck. So this should be pretty cool. So vampire tribal is going to be very nice. That and zombies are both going to be very, very good. I'm looking forward to trying both of those tribals, so 
he did nothing there so I'm just looking at my phone here in case it was anything important let me just get rid of all the crap on my phone quick there we go so when I, I had a message buzz in I was like oh if my wife I better uh, better respond but looks like we're not doing anything else this turn so we'll just skip over the uh, skip attack here then play out drowned explorers which will get us a clue token So we can use it to draw a card potentially later on. And what we've got here then, Vampire Noble. So it's a 3-2 Vampire. Not in any of the sets that we've got in the game. So it's just a, 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 sto a story card, basically. This is not in the game either, Sanguinary Mage. Whereas this one we can actually use uh, in multiplayer games. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe play Pour Over Pages first. So... Draw three cards, untap up to two lands and discard a card. So we'll play you. So we're going to draw three cards, we're going to untap one, two lands. And then we've got to discard a card. So we've got Uninvited Geist. Um, or what do we get rid of? Press for answers or pour over pages or JC... I think JC Scrutiny is probably the least useful. So we've also got Press for answers. Tap target creature, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So, or do we just use the clue token and draw another card? Now I think we might uh, tap you down. Maybe it would have been better to tap that down because I could have actually killed either of the other two. So, uh, that, was, that was a mistake. I should have tapped down the 2-4 because I could have swung there and... Um, So this could be pretty cool. This could potentially be an unblockable creature if he pumps up the Sanguinary Mage again. Okay, so what do we do this turn? And what do we get there? So... We got a clue card from something. What was it? Oh, he's investigated. He's from Press for Answers. Right, okay, I see. So we've got two clue cards now. Um, okay, so we've got Uninvited Geist, or I've got Gone Missing. So I could potentially... Put something like the 2-4 with the uh that could actually be quite a good play there because basically i can bounce this one on top of his owner's library and we also get an investigate from that as well so what we got here then fiery temper is fiery temper deals three damage to target creature or player okay so there goes our phantasmal bear it's not the end of the world and then we just swing with the 2-4 because even if he blocks it will die because we've got the greater toughness I just push through two damage there. Very nice. I do have three clue tokens. I wonder if there's any kind of like clue token synergy um, in this deck at all. So we're going to take seven damage here, I'd assume. Yep, yeah, we are going to take seven damage. So we don't really want to swing again in future to like try and prevent that damage. We're looking for one of our flyers, ideally, would be quite nice. Okay, that's cool. We found Claustrophobia. So we probably want to play out Claustrophobia and an Uninvited Geist this turn. So just skip attack and then uh, play out Uninvited Geist. And then which one do we Claustrophobia? Do we Claustrophobia the one with Prowess? I think we... Do yeah, because that'll make uh, uninvited geist unblockable every turn that way, and it's got the toughness that we can't um, can't kill with, by blocking with, say, for example, our Dranyard explorers. So yeah, that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good use of the claustrophobia there. So he's going to swing with the four two, so just block you. Trade nicely there. So, how does that flip? So, when an invited guy deals combat damage to a player, transform it, and it transforms into Unpeded Trespasser can't be blocked. Ooh, very nice. So, uh, very nice. We've actually managed to find our Aberrant Researcher here, so that is a nice card to find. So, we're going to swing with you. Can't be blocked by the 3-2 Vampire Noble. So, that's then going to transform into a 3-3. Very nice. Uh, I think we'll sacrifice one of our clues here. And we've also managed to find another Claustrophobia. So can I afford that and Aberrant Research? I cannot. So we'll use you next turn on the 3-2 Vampire Nable, potentially. Oh, yeah, it's all invest we may as well uh, sacrifice another clue here, draw another card. And it's a mana. Okay, that's fine. We've got poor over pages to refill our hand in a minute. Okay, what happened there? Something got exiled. Oh, I, I see. He paid his madness cost because he... Um, so, let me pause this for a second. So, Tormenting Voice. As an additional cost to 
cast Tormenting Vice, discard a card, and then because he discarded um, a card, he was then able to pay the madness cost on Alms of the Vein. So I lose three, um, lose three health, and he gains three health. Okay, and he's also then played out a Fiery Temper, so that's going to die. So we are going to take three more damage from the uh, from the Vampire Noble, I assume. Because there's no point in keeping it back, because it can't block the unblockable creature. I'm hoping the AI can at least understand that. So what's this one called? Unimpeded Trespasser. Okay, so I like I like the name. It's like it's a geist is some kind of like ghost, but because it, it's uninvited, it's like uninvited guest. I like that. It's, that's a clever use of uh, it's a nice it's a nice pun basically. Okay, that's cool. So we're in a good position here because we've now got an unblockable creature. We can claustrophobia the other creature which um, you cannot play. So we are just going to swing with the three three. I mean we're down at seven health, but we're in a very comfortable position here. So. Just going to deal three damage. Play out the Illusionary Servant. Here we go. And then we may as well sacrifice you, draw another card. Why not? What do we get? We got Stormgeist. So Stormgeist power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Very nice. So that's going to synergize up well with Pour Over Pages. Okay, so he's played out another Vampire Noble. So potentially you want to keep uh, Illusionary Servant back as a um, as a blocker for the 3-2. Very nice. Looking at all the mana here. So I'm going to refill my hand first with Pour Over Pages. 1-2. And then we're going to toss away the island. Play out Stormgeist in a moment. We will just swing with the 3-3 here, which is unblockable. So the 3-2 can't do anything about it. And then we'll play out Stormgeist. I mean, we could play out Fogbank, but I like the idea of actually this having some kind of um, a decent, a decent, a decent, half decent attack and defense. Okay, what have we got here then? Murderous Compulsion. Destroy target, tap creature. Okay, so goodbye to my unimpeded trespasser. It's not the end of the world. We've still got other creatures we can use. So we at least got a block for that 3 2. And we can swing with our st st Sturmgeist. Sorry, Sturmgeist, not Stormgeist. Ooh, very nice. We managed to find a Phantasmal Dragon. Very, very good uh, vanilla card. 4 mana, 5-5 five, five is always very good. It does have the uh, the illusion weakness where if it becomes a target of any kind of spell or ability, it uh, just goes immediately to the graveyard. We'll keep the fog banks in hand as they're not really that necessary. And we'll just play out our uh, Phantasmal Dragon. We'll keep three cards in hand so Sturmgeist has a you know reasonable attack and defense. Okay, so the AI has got nothing, so we can swing for lethal here. Oops, a daisy. That doesn't really matter too much. It's still eight damage that we're going to push through. I'll keep back the three, four, just in case um, he's able to remove either of these. There we go. So we've beaten the vampires. Very nice. That's uh, two, two missions down. Three to go. Probably won't get all through all five today. I'll probably do the next one, however. That's tokens coming into the battlefield. I don't know what. I'm spawning as tokens, but hey ho! Oh, it's the emblems, isn't it? The uh, the clues are actually tokens. So, inside the manor, Jace finds no sign of Sorin, but instead discovers the ghastly remains of the Markov bloodline embedded in the stone walls. Upon closer investigation, he locates a vital clue: a tattered journal filled with records of the recent happenings on Innistrad. Okay, so it looks like we've got some zombies to take on this time for the last game of today. So, the entries in the journal lead Jace to the coast of Nephalia. Uh, here too, the ground has been warped into a strange formation rising from the sea. Hordes of zombies assist with the construction, while dark shapes wheel overhead. Drawn like moss to a flame, uh, Jace ventures down to the water's edge to investigate. Okay, so we're playing, we're facing ghoul callers, so it uh, looks like zombies. Okay, so... Um, what have we got here? Nagging thoughts. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. And we've also got Aberrant Researcher. I'm going to keep this hand. I quite like it. I mean, um, we won't be doing anything turn one. But we, we do have a turn two, turn three, and turn four. So it's not too bad. We started playing Blueback Zombies, which would make sense. The theme of the Blueback Zombies making uh, a lot more of an appearance in Shadows of Rinnestrad. So... So he's going to play that. So we need to put one card into our hand. We will take the Phantasmal Dragon. The other one goes into our graveyard, which would be the mana that we don't actually need. So uh, that's pretty cool. 
Yeah. Cool. So he's played out a Seagraph Scab, which is a 1 3 zombie. Yeah, 1 3 zombie. So nothing too exciting. We're going to be playing our Illusionary Servant this turn. Aberrant Research of the turn after that, and then probably Phantasmal Dragon the turn after that. So this is a nice blocker. I do like um, Illusionary Servant is uh, is a very is a very powerful three mana mana creature. It does obviously have the illusion uh, weakness to it, but nonetheless, it's still very nice. Aberrant Research is very very nice indeed. Actually, it's a very very powerful very very powerful card. The fact that it's essentially become a five four flyer for four mana is uh, pretty cool. Okay, so my servant my. So my illusion is going to the graveyard, unfortunately. So it would bounce it back to my hand, but unfortunately, because it is a it is an illusion, yeah, it would go back to my hand. But um, so that, then that played this card to card if you control a zombie. Oh, I see. Because it didn't resolve, because my servant basically went to the graveyard. I didn't actually have to discard a card. So that was one good thing about uh, it being a, uh, being an illusion. There is the fact that it, I didn't have to then discard a card because of it. Although I've got way too much mana, so one of the islands would have just got dumped in the graveyard. What have we got here? Crow of Dark Tidings. When Crow of Dark Tidings enters the battlefield or dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Okay, so it's a two one is about to dump its uh, cards into the graveyard. So it's got rid of uh, another crow of dark tidings and a ghoul cooler's accomplice. What does that one do again? I, I know it's in the set. So okay, so if it's in the graveyard, you can exile it and put a zombie onto the battlefield, which is quite nice. So I don't think this is in the set. Oh no, it's in the uh, the it's in the deck box. So. Please transform. Hey, there we go. Claustrophobia. Very nice. So I'm thinking maybe just claustrophobia the Crow of Dark Tidings so he can swing for five damage. Just because it's another flyer. That way we can just swing for five and start beating him down. We can play out Phantasmal Dragon next turn. So yeah, this, uh, this guy is going to be swinging at, uh, at his face quite nicely. So it's a perfected form. So he's some kind of like crazy wizard um, who's like part insect, and then he's somehow managed to turn himself into some giant rampaging flying insect. Very nice. Innistrad is a lovely place to go on holiday, I'm sure. Zombies, werewolves, vampires, and giant flying insects. As you do. Have we got anything here? So we've got Rotten Heart Ghoul. When it dies, target player discards a card. So. I mean, we're still out DPS him essentially. Three damage every turn to our five. Uh, it will be ten after the Phantasmal Dragon, so technically next turn we'll be uh, pushing for lethal. Which is kind of cool, thanks to the Claustrophobia preventing the... Uh, what's the one looking for? The Crow of Dark Tidings blocking our uh, perfected form. Okay, so what are the uh, what are the zombies got next? So compel it. Okay, so our five five is just going to go to the graveyard again. Don't have to discard a card because of the uh, illusionary weakness. So interestingly, he didn't go for the perfected form, and he's got another crow of dark tidings. So that's kind of annoying. It's going to take us at least three more turns to what do we get rid of? He got rid of a flesh to dust and a mana there. So he's going to be swinging for three here. So we're probably going to do pour over the pages this turn. Find ourselves some. Uh, what we got? Oh, we got uninvited geist, which is quite nice. But we are going to pour over the pages first. Draw some cards. So we're going to untap one, two, and what do we want to toss away? Uh, target player draws a card, then discards a card. Not the most useful. I might get one, rid of one of the reckless scholars there. So what's welcome to the fold? Gain control of target creature if its toughness is two or less. If welcome to the fold, madness cost was paid. Okay, so. Um, it's pretty cool. So, pour over the pages could be useful for triggering the madness cost later on, on the uh, Welcome to the Fold. So, we're just probably just going to play out um, Uninvited Geist this turn. Swing with the uh, swing with the five four here. Get into block with the uh, with the crow, which we are. There we go. And then we just play you out. So he had to toss away another two cards. So he's milling himself down at this point. I mean, these decks are quite small. You really don't want to be milling yourself down if you can avoid it. If he plays out another one of those crows. Okay, we've got Flesh to Dust. So goodbye, 5 4. So I might nick his, um, his zombie here. So he's going to skip blocking there.
What are we going to find? We are going to find a Drownwood, Drown, uh, Drownyard Explorer. So I'm tempted to welcome to the fold Nick is Seagraph's... Uh, what's it called? The Seagraph Scab? Or do I grab his uh, Rotten Heart Ghoul, maybe? Just trying to think what's best here. I mean, if I actually say, welcome to the fold, I'm going to get that. Because it will then make our uninvited Geist unblockable. So why didn't we grab that? Game control... Why do we gain control of it? Oh, it's toughness is two or less. Oh, well, I completely misread that. I thought it was power, so uh, that was completely my own fault there. I'm sorry, guys. I misread that. I thought it was... Um... Why did it allow me to target it if it's a bloody 1-3? Yeah, but it's, it's all done on toughness, so uh, that's uh, rather silly of me. Didn't realise that. So we are slowly getting beaten down by these zombies here, and he's got another Rotten Heart Ghoul here. So yeah, that was very, very silly of me there. I completely misread that. So we do have a claustrophobia here. So I tend to use that later, but we're going to maybe get out our Drown Yard Explorers. Just going to get us a uh, get, get us a clue. So yeah, this does count. Yeah, it does actually count as a token. So we're going to sacrifice you now and find a mana. Okay, so skip attack here. I play out the mana and they can't really do anything else. So what's he going to do? Is he going to swing at all? He's going to swing. Okay. So he's going to block some of the damage here. Could have blocked the 1-3 as well, I suppose. I wasn't really paying attention there. Has he got another creature to play out? Geese's bidding. So put 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield. Okay, so they've come down. What do we got here then? Sturmgeist. Ooh, that's a good one. That could potentially win it for us at this point. So I'm going to play you out. It comes down as a 3-3, but we will draw us a card every turn. So we're just going to keep these guys back. So he's going to swing with pretty much everything. So we'll block you. Block you. Let the four damage go through. So we got here then. We've got Lamplighter of Selhoff. When enters the battlefield, if you control another zombie, you may draw a card. If you do so, discard a card. Okay, so basically he's gonna draw a card and discard I say now he probably doesn't have to draw a card. Okay, he just drew and discarded out of mana. Okay, interesting. Okay, we've got another Drown Yard Explorers, which is quite nice. So we're going to claustrophobia you. And then we're just gonna swing with the 3-3 three, three at his face. And then maybe just play out a Drown Yard Explorers as, a, as an additional blocker for these two fours. Play out the island, play out the Drown Yard Explorer. There we go. So I might kill the 2-2 two -two with, um, with my uh, Uninvited Geist just because it's not really doing much at the moment. Okay, so we're just going to swing with the 2-4, so we're just going to block it with our one of our 2-4s. Okay, that works for me. If he's not willing to play anything else, what we got here, Ghoulsteed. So it's a 4-4. Four, four. So we could do some way of uh, dealing with that, ideally. So what we got? We've got Phantasmal Bear. It's quite nice. Uh, we're going to sacrifice uh, sacrifice you, which will pump up my... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? My Sturmgeist. We'll swing at his face. Oh, I should have poured over pages there. Whoops a daisy. That would have got me two. Uh, I don't think it would have mattered too much. Would have got me two additional cards, which wouldn't still have been lethal. So I'm now going to just kind of play out a load of creatures here. It's going to empty my hand out, but I can pour over pages to refill my hand next turn. So I'm not too bothered there. So it's going to go down to a 1 1, but it'll be back up to a 3 damage next turn. So I'm basically just playing out all the creatures I can to prevent me from dying this turn. So yeah, he's done nothing here. And what we got here then? From under the floorboard, so put 3-2-2... Two, two, okay, so he's putting 3-2-2 two, two black zombie creatures taken on the battlefield. Doesn't actually matter because we've got the uh, Sturm guys to actually win it for us, so... Okay, so we don't want to play out the island, so we're going to pour over pages. 
So he's going to tap you, tap you. We're going to throw away the island. Oh, he got health back from somewhere. Where did that come from? I'm assuming this. Oh, yeah, he gained three life from that. Well, that makes me quite sad. So I'm going to swing with you. And I'm going to keep playing out creatures, basically. So at this point, we're just trying to we're just kind of beat him down a little bit. So we're going to draw an additional card. So Nacking Thoughts, we shall keep. I'm going to play Aberrant Research just because next turn it could provide us that additional lethal damage that we need. So I'll keep these three cards in hand for um, keeping the Sturmgeist at a reasonable power level. So what did he put back? I think he just put a 2-2 zombie creature onto the battlefield. What else have we got? Crow of Dark Tidings. Okay, again, not too bothered by that. So he's only got one fly which can block either our Sturmgeist or our Aberrant Research next turn. So I think we're okay here. I think we've got enough creatures to block. So we're going to block with you and then block with you. There we go. So yeah, basically we've won here. There's nothing the area could do about it. So you're going to transform potentially. Even if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Okay, there we go. So we can swing with the 4-4 and the 5-4. Perfect. Either one of them has to connect, and basically he's only got one creature which can block them. So one gets blocked, the other pushes through lethal. Excellent. So uh, three wins out of three, all on the first attempt, so uh, rather successful. Nice 30 gold netted there. Came up just short of being able to uh, unlock a pack, unfortunately, so let's read this. So the ghouls claw at Jace, but provides little information about the stone edifice before him. The sound of frenzied wings overhead turns his gaze skyward. Angels. He's seen them before in the journal's entries. He follows the angels and the journal's clues onwards towards the th town of Thraben. So yeah, Thraben is uh, quite a uh, common theme in terms of Innistrad cards. Okay, so we'll leave these last two uh, battles for next time and I'll leave it here for now. So as always guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.